Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks and you are checking out a sound design tutorial on ADSR. In this video, I'm, I'm gonna show you how you can create a Reese bass and how you can do it in pretty much any, any synth. So the reason why I wanted to do this tutorial is I get asked this question quite a bit, how to create a Reese bass. And it's a fairly simple sound to make. I'm not saying that to put down anyone who you know, may not know how to make it, but I'm saying that because I wanna spend more of the bulk of this video on how to make a Reese bass more interesting and unique and fit different vibes. So a Reese bass, for those who don't know, it's basically a kind of a it's kind of a subby sounding bass, but it's it's saw based. It's you could usually going to use a saw waveform that has some voices of unison, right? So it fills out the low end of your mix, but it's not as tight and not as big and impactful as say an 808 or pure sub bass. So I use it a lot. Different genres you can use it in hip hop, pop, trap, future bass, whatever it might be. Um, you can make them kind of dark and creepy. You can make them more bright sounding. It really just depends what you're going for. So. Let's listen to this track that I started here. Um, it's kind of a lo-fi chill vibe. So we're gonna add a lo-fi chill re-space to it. All right, you get the idea. So I'm gonna be working inside of Serum for this video. Now you can do this in any synth. Um, depending on what synth you use, you might be able to do everything I do in this video or not. For instance, I'm gonna layer in a sample at some point. So if you're using like Silent, you won't be able to do that. But if you're using like Tone 2 Electra X or Anna 2 or whatever it might be, you could probably add a lot more samples than I'm going to add. So that being said, let's dive in. First things first, you want a saw waveform. And you wanna tune that down depending on your key, maybe two octaves from where it is, usually an octave will do. Now I'm gonna add some voices of unison. Now I'm gonna add a odd voice count for this. Five, seven, nine, eleven, maybe three. Right, three would be a little, little, little too, too. Uh, wouldn't be enough. So probably five, seven, or nine is going to be right in a in a good amount or good space. But the reason why you want to add five or seven, in my opinion, an odd number or nine, is because you can see here. Look at that blue line. When you add an odd number, there's always going to be a voice directly in the center of the stereo field, right? And it's never spread out. So when you're working with a bass, I think that's important. It's going to make the the low end of the mix a little bit tighter than if you used, you know, like eight voices and the, there's two voices spread out in stereo that are your center. So let's just go with seven for this. Actually, let's go with nine. And let's turn my detune down. In Serum, usually 0 0.10 to 0 0.14 works well. But if you're in another synth that doesn't have that point, uh, you know, 0.10 or whatever it is, uh, if you're like in percentages, zero to 100, try anywhere from around 10 to 25%. And I'll keep the blend where it is, but let's change our voicing to mono and turn the glide up a little bit. All right, so the next step really is just at, at, you know, at a bare minimum, it's just using a detuned super saw sound, right? That you're running into a low pass filter. So let's add a little bit of fat and drive to it. A little bit of resonance as well. So that's really kind of the, the basic Reese bass. Now, that's a pretty boring one. What a lot of people do, a lot of producers will do is they'll, they'll do some type of modulation. Maybe they'll open up the filter a little bit with an LFO or an envelope, or you know maybe they'll, they'll change the detune rate. So let's actually do that now. Let's open up our filter a little bit. So let's turn this back down, turn our modulation depth down, turn on trigger, uncheck BPM, and turn our rate down. Right, and we can do that same thing to our detune amount. So we can have it be more detuned as it opens up the filter. All right, so the next thing I like to do is I like to layer it with another type of saw sound. Now, if you're working with a virtual analog synth, you can change the phase. If you're working with a wavetable synth or synths that have unique waveforms, find another saw sounding waveform. All right, so I've loaded up a wavetable here. Um, that actually adds a fifth. There's a fifth embedded in the wavetable. Check this out. All right, so let's add our voices of unison. Let's try this out. We'll do seven for this, turn it down, route it into our filter, and we need to turn the octave down as well. Now, if I don't like that, I can go to another one here. Here's a mellow saw sound. Let's actually use this one instead of the fifth. And what I'll do is I'll modulate my wavetail position with that same LFO.
And if you need more sub, you can always turn on a dedicated sub -os oscillator in your synth. I take that back. I actually like the fifth more. So let's roll with the fifth. Now, what you can do is you can also layer in some type of sample or noise. It could be white noise, pink noise, vinyl noise, you know, foley. It could be another type of bass, right? So I want to layer in some foley to kind of fit the lo-fi chill vibe of this track. All right, so right now I've loaded in a rain sound. Sounds like just a rainstorm. It's another rainstorm. I have some fo foley samples here. I actually like the wind, but I like, the, I like that fourth storm. I'm sorry, the third one. All right, let's roll with that. So let's hear what this sounds like in the mix. Added some uh, side chain compression, some pumping to the sound in Serum. So let's take a listen to how the final bass sounds with the mix. All right, so you guys get the idea. You can basically just detune some type of saw sound, maybe layer in another saw sounding waveform with it, something that. So maybe a blend between a square, a triangle, and a saw, but still a little bit buzzy because you're going to filter out a lot of the highs, right? And then modulate, get creative with it, add in some unique samples. You'd be surprised what you can do. So for this specific track, that rainstorm sounded interesting. It added to the vibe of the track, right? I wouldn't do that in a real bright, pop, poppy type of song, but you guys get the idea. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you guys like this video and you want to see more videos like it, please hit that like and subscribe button. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.